one, a flat in North London. The flat is cluttered at the start of part one and empty by the end of it. In part one, all the characters are in the same location at the same time, but in different time zones. They don't interact with each other. They move about the flat without connecting as in a carefully choreographed ballet. They speak directly to the audience. Agnes, Jerry and Lynn are all on stage. The occupant enters from the bedroom, dressed in a nightie and dressing gown, and exits to the bathroom. How do people live in such a mess? God. I get so many jobs like this, in a mess like this one. I guess it just gets on top of you and stuff builds up. I was doing a job last week in North London. An old man hadn't thrown anything away for 20 years. He wouldn't let it go, you know, couldn't let it go. Just, man, just let it go, you know, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Na 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 na. Mountemos, mountemos. Ba da ba da. You know, it's it's Maya's favorite song. After a while, the old man's neighbors complained to the council they couldn't stand the smell coming from his flat. When we got there, the flat was so full of rubbish. We couldn't open the front door. We had to go around the back and climb in through the window. It was piled high with rubbish. The occupant enters from the bathroom and opens the curtains. She exits to the kitchen. You know, not fair to call it rubbish. You know, things, possessions, belongings. The smell in this flat isn't as bad. We can get rid of it. By the time we've cleared everything away and cleaned it thoroughly, it will smell as fresh as a daisy. The only problem with living in London is the constant noise. The sound of traffic 24 seven. People in the street all the time of the day and night. That's what I miss the most about home. You know, the silence. I wonder what they were. They are so brittle now. They've turned to dust. Ugh. Fragile. They crumble on touch. I think they were once roses. There's no smell left. I can't tell what color they were. I hope they were red from a, from a boyfriend, a lover, a secret admirer. Ooh. They could have been given to her on Valentine's Day. How romantic. No, it's, it's Valentine's Day soon. I'd like flowers. I used to collect dried flowers when I was a child. I used to pick them from the fields around our house and keep them in a large book. Stokrotki. Uh, uh, daisies. Uh, Jaskre, that would be um, buttercups and maki, that would be poppies. Red poppies were my favorite. They were everywhere. And if you press flowers between two sheets of bloating paper, they dry out. You can press them with a warm iron for a few seconds so they flatten and dry out. They will be preserved like this forever. I made a picture for my grandma from dried flowers. Um, a Christmas present. She hanged it on the wall in her kitchen. I wonder if my mom still has it. I'll check when I'm next back in Poland. It took us three weeks to clear the flat in North London. Clean it thoroughly and redecorate. Then the old man could move back in. Well, he wasn't happy. He said it didn't feel like home anymore. <laughs> I know what he means. I think he's going to move into a care home. No. This place isn't as bad. There are only four rooms. I think we'll finish here in three days. Well, we've got to. We've only got three days in our budget to finish the job. 
I really don't know how people live like this. Cleanliness is next to godliness, in my opinion. And, you know, all this stuff gets burned. None of it gets reused. You know, shame, really. Some of this furniture is okay. I could use it. But company policies to burn it. It's, it's such a waste. When I first came to this country, I got a job in a hotel. I love that job. The Russell Hotel in central London. Do you know it? Uh, it's near Euston Station. It's the best job I've ever had. Yeah, that was cleaning as well. We had a nice little team spirit going. The job only lasted a year and then they had to cut back. I had to find something else. Well, this job's okay, I, I suppose. At least it's work. Hmm. There's a lot more people worse off than me. I came here from Poland six years ago with three friends. It was hard starting a new life in a foreign country so far from home. Well, we all had such exciting plans. Me and my boyfriend, we were going to start up a business together. He doing all jobs and me doing cleaning. Yeah. It didn't happen. Two of my three friends have gone back home already and I've lost contact with the other one. I, I feel alone, very alone at times. Look at these letters, unopened. They are just left on the floor. Vera Williams, yeah, missed Vera Williams. I wonder who she was. I have thought that the police could, would have taken them away, you know, opened them. Well, they've got to go, but I wonder if there's any money in them. Better not. It's a, it's a sackable offense. The occupant enters from the kitchen with a cup of tea and sits in the armchair to drink it. She works on the door puzzle. Life has a way of kicking you in the balls, don't you think? Yeah, it kicks you in the balls when you least expect it. It's my 40th birthday this year and I wanted to have a big celebration, but that's not going to happen now, is it? Huh. Yeah, not now. The celebrations are on hold, permanently. I plan to have a massive party, invite everyone I knew, friends, family, work, colleagues. I was going to try and dig up some old school friends who I hadn't seen for years, invite them along, but not now. There's no point in going ahead with it now, is there? It won't be much fun. See, me and a photo of my wallet yeah it was taken last year the first day back at school what do you think huh and they beautiful yeah, they're my world and the cream on my milk <laughs> i always carry that photo with me Anyway, the girls was around a mate's house having a sleepover uh, uh, for the weekend. I guess that's why we ran, me and the missus. I guess we was just in each other's company for, for too long, just the two of us. Gets on your nerves after a bit, doesn't it? Being with someone to force seven gets on your tits. It's right up your nose. I think that's why we ran. She said some hurtful things. She accused me of having an affair with her best mate, Anna, who works in a local supermarket, Asda, where my mum used to work. Bloody cheek of it. I hadn't, I promise. A best mate's not my type. Well, no, not that I would if she were. <laughs> that's not what I meant. She isn't and I didn't, and that's the truth. Then she accused me of having an affair with someone at work. Karen, one of my co-workers. Now, that's more of a possibility. 
for some nice girls at work, but it's still not true. You're the only one for me, Angel, I told her. And that's when she lumped me, smacked me right on the chin. Must have caught me just right, just as I was moving in. Bloody painful it was. Stung for ages, throbbed all night. Bang out of order, I thought, on Boxing Day. It's totally unreasonable. We don't row often. We're not like other people do. There have been some serious rares on our street, but not us, not often. But when we do, Jesus. <laughs> we don't take no prisoners. The police were called. Not by us, by the neighbours, but it was an exception. Police didn't do anything. Just checked that we was okay and then went away again. She's accused me of having an affair with Karen before, a couple of times in fact, but this time she just wouldn't let it go. Karen's 29, single. She's great fun to be around. She's full of energy, do you know what I mean? She never stops talking. I trained her up, took her under my wing when she, was, when she first joined, taught her everything I know. But I hadn't, you know, tried it on with her, I promise. Our relationship was purely professional. Well, that sounds bad, doesn't it? Purely professional. Sounds like I paid her for it. That's not what I meant. Our relationship was only work-related. Nothing more than that. A couple of the others in the office tried on with her. I think Derek did. Yeah, I, I know Ryan did, but not me. No way. I must confess, I'd like to. She's a good-looking girl, but I didn't. I promise. Cross my heart and hope to die. Bloody uncomfortable sleeping on the sofa. I didn't get a wink of sleep. No springs, too short. I thought, oh, well, at least it'll be worth it. At least you'll have calmed down by the morning. There's no use in crying over spilt milk, as my dad would say. Yeah, but she hadn't. She was in the same foul mood when she got up as she was when she went to bed. Didn't say a word to me. Just got up, came down to the kitchen, made a sub cup of tea and went back to bed. Morning, love, I said. Not a word, not a fucking word. This is gonna be a long day, I thought. She eventually got up around 10, graced me with her presence at 10. Luckily, it was a Saturday. I want you not to be here when I get back, she said. What? I want you out of the house, gone. Where? She slammed the door as she left. No explanation. No discussion, just wants me out. Yeah, where am I supposed to go, love? Didn't answer me. Just marched off down the street. The occupant exits to the bedroom. I ain't going to the coroner's call. It's not really police work, is it? We must give evidence when there's been a death. I mean, it's part of our duties. But it's not really catching criminals, is it? This case is an exception. The coroner said it was an open and shut case, death by natural causes, and that was it. I wasn't happy with that. I've been involved with Vera from the start. I discovered her body. I remember the call to Waterloo House as if it were only yesterday. I mean, it was over two months ago now, but it still feels as if it were yesterday. I had to break down the door, a flat at six. We rang the bell several times, but there was no answer. There wasn't a key. No one could find the key, so I had to break down the door. It was very exciting. The neighbour reported a dreadful smell which had started to seep through into his flat. I kicked hard on the door a couple of times to force it open and then went inside. The door creaked a lot as we pushed on it. I think it had rusted shut. It exploded into splinters as we crashed through. My job isn't as usually as physical as that. No, not. It used to be, but not anymore. Yeah. What we found inside that flat upset me so much, shook me. I still have flashbacks. I visit the flat on occasion. You know, come back here when I'm nearby. I believe that an essence of a person remains in the room even after they've left. I know that sounds weird, but I believe it. I can feel Vera's presence when I'm here. 
The occupant enters mm. from the bedroom dressed in a brown coat. She takes an empty trolley bag and exits the flat. I keep returning. I keep searching through her belongings to see if there's anything I've missed. Anything that can tell me who she was. I can't believe there is nothing. Such a fire hazard, all this paper. People don't realize it. It can set itself alight. I did a job in Newbury Park once where there was so much paper that it had caught fire and no one noticed. They couldn't see it smoldering because of the rubbish until it was too late. The fire brigade put the fire out, but it still did a lot of damage. Where I live is neat and tidy. It's gotta be. Everything is tidied away and put into boxes. I share my, I share my room with two girls. There isn't much space. We've got to keep things tidy, got to be organized. Yeah, I, I used to share a room with my boyfriend, but he's gone back to Poland. And that's my daughter's third birthday tomorrow. She's having a frozen party. Uh, I got her this lovely dress on Amazon. Uh, you know, she likes pink. Do you know that film, Frozen? So she wants to be Anna. It's like Anna's dress, but pink. I guess all little girls like pink. She can dress up in it on her birthday. The bathroom is in, in such a state. Half the ceiling has collapsed and the window has broken. It looks like the rain has been coming in for years. Weeds have started to grow in the bathtub. I'm surprised there are so few pests in here. I think they got away with that a bit. There are some mouse dropping in the corner, but I haven't seen any mice. Might see some when I clear it a bit more. Oh God, oh rats, oh, I hate rats and cockroaches. I think they're lucky, the people who live in the other flats that they didn't get infected. No, okay. March, 2010. Yep, January, 2008. Okay. Australian actor Heath Ledger found dead. Yeah, I remember that. I was still in Poland when he died. I, I loved that film, Batman. What was it called? The Dark Knight? Uh, yeah, my favorite movie. Heath Ledger as a Joker. I saw it in Warsaw when I was 15. I went with a few friends from school. Yeah. Happy days. I wish I could play the piano. I never had the opportunity to learn. My girls did. They're quite good. They better play it in a concert at a school last year. I was extremely proud. I don't know how they'll get it down the stairs. It's two flights. You don't keep you fit. I've always been one for a peaceful life. I always do what I need to do to keep the peace. I stayed the first night of my exile in a dirty hotel in Euston, right on the busy road, the Russell Hotel on Russell Square. Do you know it? It's cheap, simple, anonymous. Looks like it hadn't been cleaned in years. It smelled musty, you know, stale, like, like someone had died in it. My room was simple, single bed, sink, toilet, just the basics. It was only going to be a temporary measure, a short fix, somewhere to stay while she calmed the fuck down. I thought I'd move back here, home after the weekend, you know, get back before the kids know I'd gone. The following morning, I called her. She didn't answer. I texted, she didn't reply. Saturday night, Sunday, 20 calls I made, nothing. How can you ignore me like this, darling? I tweeted. We've been together for 20 years, don't I deserve better? we got two kids for fuck's sake. I never want to see you again, she replied, 
all in capitals. She never wants to see me again. You never want to see me again, came like a bolt out of the blue. Can we talk this through? I never want to see you again. But the kids, nor, nor do they. The traffic motored by outside. Horns blared, tires screeched. After a couple of nights, I found a little flat to rent in Archway, North London. I knew about it through work, fully furnished. It wasn't ideal, but it was on the Northern line. Single bed, bathroom, a kitchen, diner type thing. It was, it was only temporary. <laughs> it was only temporary. There weren't enough room for my kids to come and stay, but at least it was clean, spotless. Took a lease out for six months. That was the minimum I could get. I paid the deposit on my credit card, got my keys and moved in. The block was one of those converted terrace houses, a couple of flats on the ground floor, another two on the first floor and two flats on the top floor. I bet it was grand when it was all one house. My flat was on the top floor at the front overlooking the road. The other flats were all occupied except for the one across the landing from mine, which had been uh, empty for years. Kept myself to myself. I found that was the best way to get on with the neighbours. We all did. We all kept ourselves to ourselves. It worked well. Been years since I lived on my own. 16 years, in fact, 11 years since I'd rented. In the space of three weeks, I'd gone from a three bedroom family home to a single bedroom flat. But it was only temporary, I promised myself. Just a base until we can get back on my feet. Only temporary until she has me back, then we can all laugh it off and get on with our lives. First few nights in my new place went past in a bit of a blur. <sighs> my new place, my temporary new place. Even New Year's Eve. Yeah, I spent New Year's Eve on my own in a poxy little flat in Archway. Takeaways and lager, you know, kind of thing. Tried cooking for the first time in years. That was a disaster. I lost the habit, burnt everything. I decided to stick to takeaways. There's plenty to choose from in Archway. I didn't have a TV, didn't have anything. I bought a change of underwear from the local m and couple of shirts from Topshop, tackled the laundrette on the high street, got a toothbrush, toothpaste and soap from the local chemist, slowly built up what I needed. <laughs> yeah, what I needed was to be let back into my own fucking home. What I needed was to know what I'd done wrong how I could put it right, how we both could put it right together. I can change, darling. We both can change. I'd welcome change. I'd embrace it with open arms. My work partner, my ex work partner, Arthur Art, was attacked a couple of years ago. We went to a shout at the local children's home in Enfield. Just a regular call out, something that happens every day of the week. Kids being boisterous, causing a nuisance as they do. When we got there, it was all but over. A couple of young kids, both 13, had been fighting over who could use the PlayStation next. Just, just as they do in every household throughout the country. Except this one had got out of control. But it was over when we got there. I, mean, I think the PlayStation had broken or been confiscated or something. Anyway, the fighting had stopped. We still had to ask some questions, though, to make sure it didn't flare up again. Yeah. It was in the middle of questioning that two of the kids turned on Art and attacked him. He said it happened so quickly he didn't notice what was happening until it was too late. I mean, he had no time to react, no opportunity to, to, be, to defend himself. I was outside in the car, filling in the paperwork. And Art was alone with the kids. We thought it was over. We thought he was safe. They attacked him with furniture, a pork cue and a chair. And they threw a table at him and stole his radio, used his pepper spray on him. I mean, they barricaded themselves into the room. They were just having a laugh, you know? Young kids having fun. 
have you ever had pepper spray go off in your eyes? Oh, it stings like hell. I've got it in my eyes once by accident. I used it on a guy, but I didn't judge the wind right and it blew back into my face. <laughs> it stings. It's like wiping your eyes after cutting chilies, only 100 times worse. Your eyes run for hours. Took us three hours to talk the kids into releasing up and coming out of the house. It was a Friday an ordeal. Oh, oh I was left the police force now. Early retirement on medical grounds. I mean, he got quite a nice payoff. I'm a bit envious. I could do with retiring early. I still see him on occasions. He comes into the station when he's passing. He gets bored sitting at home all day. His wife and kids want him to get out of the house more often. He's thinking, get, getting a job at the local supermarket, you know, part-time, give him something to do, purpose in life. The occupant enters. She's dressed in a brown coat. She pushes the trolley bag in front of her, which is now full of shopping. She has a bunch of red roses wrapped in paper, which she places on the table. She takes off her coat and puts it in the bed. I don't go to the cinema anymore. Not since I've been in the UK. It's just too expensive. I don't go out much at all. Everything is so expensive in London. I've been given a room in a house in Hounslow by my company. I share it with two other girls. They, we all work for Superior Cleaning Services Limited. They own the house. They take our rent out of our wages. It doesn't leave much at the end of the week to go out with, so I don't. I send all the money I can back to my family in Poland. It gets a bit noisy in my house. There's 12 people living there. Lots of coming and going, lots of shouting. I wanna move out soon and get a place of my own. The occupant enters from the bedroom. She takes the empty vase out to the kitchen. Some of the girls have got side businesses. They sell some of the possessions that they clear away on eBay. You know, take that TV, for instance. Not the newest version, but you could still get a few pounds for it on eBay, yeah, if it works. One girl has a stall in Shepherd's Bush Market, selling bits and pieces on a Sunday, you know, mainly, mainly clothes. She does all right, earns a couple of hundred pounds extra a week. You've got to do what you need to do. Yeah, to survive, don't you? I'm not like that. It feels disrespectful. But I wonder what Miss Vera has. The occupant returns with a vase full of water. She unwraps the flowers and arranges them in the vase. What do you think? Does it suit me? You know, it feels nice and soft. I think it's like 100, 100% wool. This would fetch, I don't know, 20 quid down Shepherd's Bush Market. Tempting. My wages could do with a little top up. I'd like to go out to the cinema occasionally. It seems like a bit of a waste of all the stuff being destroyed. It should go to the homeless or the unemployed at least. You know, I'll suggest it to my manager. Okay. I'm going to get fish and chips on my way home tonight. That's my favorite thing about being in this country. Fish and chips with salt and vinegar. Tomato ketchup. I get them from my local chippy, so they are still hot by the time I get home. Okay, that's it for, that's it for today. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. That's my boss. That's not a very good sign. I'll have to answer it. Mm. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I need to pick some stuff up. I begged her after a week. Yeah, I need to see my kids. She didn't reply. I'm coming round tomorrow, I told her. Hello? Hello, I'm coming round. Put down a phone on me. I bought a large bunch of red roses on my way. All women love flowers, don't they? Especially roses. When I got there, she wouldn't let me in. She wouldn't even open the door to me. She wouldn't even take the fucking chain off the hook. She, she got our 14 year old daughter to pass messages to me through the crack between the door and the door frame. How petty is that? Hello, darling. How are you? I inquired. She don't want to see her. What? What? She, she, she doesn't want to, what, why? I could hear her moving about in the background, listening, hiding. I could hear her breathing, whispering instructions, shuffling her feet. Yeah, I can hear you, darling. She doesn't want to see her. Look, tell your mother that I'm sorry, that I love her, that I love you all very much, that I miss you all than words can say. Tell her I bought some flowers. Will you tell her that, will you? Yeah. She don't want to see her. Yeah, no, she don't. Sorry, darling, I didn't mean to shout at you. I, I just need my clothes, some clothes, any clothes. They wouldn't let me in. They flatly refused to let me into my own house, my own fucking home. All I want is a change of clothes, please, sweetheart. And my wash kit, my work clothes. You can pick them up in the morning, she said by my 14 year old daughter. They'll be ready for you in the morning at 9 a.m. on the doorstep, but you can't come in. And with that, they closed the door, turned the key in the lock and slid the bolt across. I left the flowers on the doorstep and went back to my flat. How did we get to this? How have things broken down so much that you won't even speak to me? How have things got so bad that you won't even let me in to my own house? A house I've worked every day of my fucking life to pay for. 9am the next day, on the doorstep of my three-bedroomed semi-detached house in Ealing, West London, my family home of 20 years were two suitcases. 20 years of my life, of family life, of work, of of sacrifice were packed into two trip graphite style medium four wheel suitcases. That was it. No, no, no one to wave goodbye. Just two suitcases waiting for me on the doorstep. Yeah. Not even the new suitcases. Oh no, not the good suitcases, but the old suitcases. Yeah, the cheap ones, the ones with the broken wheels. The flowers, yeah, they were still there on the doorstep, crushed flat beneath the suitcases. Fuck you. Fuck the lot of you. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to be treated like this. I wheeled off my life, dragged my life behind me, bumped it down the street, wobbled it on the tube and took it away to a pox little flat in North London. When I unpacked my stuff, it brought it all home to me, what I'd lost. There weren't much room to store things in a one bedroom flat, a single cupboard, a single chest of drawers. My work clothes were all creased. I take pride in my appearance. I'm always immaculately turned out, as you can tell. We well, have to be in my line of work. When you're dealing with the public, first appearances matter. I heard of this trick that if you leave a shirt under the mattress overnight, then the creases will be gone in the morning. I, I hung what I could in the wardrobe, put what I could in the drawers. I left the rest of the shit in the suitcases and stored it under the bed, done, finished, settled in. Welcome to my new home.
What happened to art <laughs> made me reassess my own life, evaluate what's important and what's not. I never really wanted to have children. I did once when I was young, it didn't work out. But I would like my own home, my own place and someone to love. My hands are a bit tired at the moment, what with mum's health and all that, but well, I haven't got long to retire. I must just keep out of trouble for a few more years and then who knows, the world's my oyster. I didn't get disciplined for putting my partner in danger. No. But I know that's what my colleagues think happened. I mean, they don't say anything, but I know deep down inside, they blame me for Art's injuries. I can feel them looking at me, their eyes following me. A couple, a couple of them refused to go out on patrol with me. And they're right. I feel the same. I blame myself. You know, I was responsible. I shouldn't have left him in the house on his own. I've been moved on to lighter duties for the time being, you know, like family liaison officer or guarding the scene of crimes. I don't get involved with chasing criminals anymore. Of course, I still have to arrest someone if I saw them com committing a crime, but well, that isn't part of my main duties any longer. I did get involved in a, a domestic abuse incident a few, few months ago, you know, just after Christmas. A man hit his wife in West London, punched her in the face, broke her nose. I was only there as backup. I must have been the only person left in the station that night who could drive the van. When we got there, it was all sorted. They didn't need the van after all. Going to incidents like that make me realise just how lucky I am to be on my own. Yeah. They can be cruel at times, can't they? It's a bit disappointing not being at the heart of the action takes away the purpose of being a police officer. I mean, the whole reason I joined the force in the first place. I spent most of my time following up with parents about kids playing truant, you know. Did you know that little Johnny wasn't at school today? What will become of him if he doesn't pass his exams? Huh. He'll end up like me, doing a job he hates. Hey, Control's <laughs> able to attend an archway town centre, over. Sierra 44, able to attend, over. Got to go to this. Officer needs assistance, Archway News, over. Okay, got to go to this. Good morning, my lovelies. How are you today? I've been here since six. Oh well, another day, another dollar. It snowed last night. A little, when I was walking home. It was still icy when I got here this morning. The kitchen table is carried across the back of the stage and out the front door. Some of this furniture is still carried. It's better than the stuff that we have in our house. That, that kitchen table, for, for instance. Give it a good clean and it, it will be fine. The occupant opens a window. She takes several newspapers and magazines out of the trolley bag and places them on the table. She takes the trolley bag out to the kitchen. Anyone? Wants anything? 50 quid a lot! 50 quid a lot! <laughs> right! Right, just kidding, man. First day back at work after the Christmas break is always a bit of a write-off, don't you think? How are you? Did you have a nice break? What did Santa bring you? Blah, blah, blah. Thousands of emails to answer, hundreds of voice messages to listen to, mince pies to finish off, unwanted chocolates to eat. Yeah, I've tried to avoid it. I always go back a couple of days later than everyone else. On my first day back, we had a team meeting at 10 and the whole office was invited. The state of play, your targets, for the year, that sort of thing. Derek is the boss. He's, well, he's more than a boss. He owns a place. It's his name above the door. Derek Parsons Estate Agents, bold as brass, big as possible, white illuminated letters, two feet tall. Yeah, he's done very well for himself. He started off with one branch in Ealing 10 years ago, and now he's got four branches, Ealing, uh, Hammersmith, Fulham and Barnet, all through selling shoeboxes to the middle classes. It makes a fortune. 
I've been with Derek since the start, by his side for 10 years, longer, in fact, 13 years. I oversaw the lettings in the Barnet office, Barnet down to Archway, Tottenham, across to Wembley. That was my patch, my area. It was huge. Me, Karen and Ryan covered it all. The A team, <laughs> my team. We've been a top performing team for three years in a row. I had the certificates above my desk to prove it. Hmm. There's a problem, he said. Derek said to me when we were alone. A big problem. Lettings are down. Yeah, I know the figures are down, Derek, but it's only a temporary blimp. It's the wrong kind of time of year. Uh, year on year, they're down. A downward trajectory for 12 months. We've got to change. We will. Trust me. Where did the expression new blood come from? Who made that up? I think it's time for new blood in lettings, he said. Time for someone new to have a go, some new thinking. Bloodletting in lettings. Well, I've been with you since the start, Derek, I said. And I'm not letting you go. I just want to give someone else a chance to lead. Someone, give someone else a go, see what they can do. <laughs> he offered me a new non-customer facing role in the office. Put together just for me. Manning the phones, booking appointments, keeping a window display up to date. Record keeping is the beating heart of the business, he said. Oh, bollocks, I replied. Fuck your beating heart, Derek, and fuck your business. Do you know what you can do? You can stick your non-customer facing beating heart roll right up your ass, Derek. That's what you can do with it. Yeah, I know that was a bit impetuous, a bit hot headed of me. I should have taken a moment to think about things to calm the fuck down, to weigh things up, you know, count to 10. But that's not me. That's not the way I operate. 10 years of my life I've given to that place, 10 years of my fucking life, and I was discarded like that, chucked on the scrap heap for a younger model. How dare you? She was waiting outside the office when I left. I'm sorry. Don't say a word. I'm really sorry. Not a fucking word, Karen. Not a fucking word. Cardboard box, cleared me desk, went back to my bed sit. Oh, oh. he was a shoplifter, a drunk, drug addict. I've dealt with him before, yeah, many times. A homeless guy who lives on that patch in up wasteland near the Holloway Road train station. We moved him on. I've no doubt he'll be back. Oh, all action being a police officer, isn't it? Oh, it's cold in here. The heating doesn't work. Gas was turned off years ago. I think it was turned off before she died. I mean, she had a little electric heater near her feet when we found her. I hate being cold. Oh, oh that's better. When the call came in for Waterloo House, I was nearby. The neighbour across the landing reported that a foul smell had started to come from the flat opposite his, you know. So they sent me round to investigate. I guess they thought it was a dead cat or dog or something simple that I couldn't fuck up. We lead, others follow. That's our motto. I forced open the door and entered the flat. The smell was almost too much to bear. I mean, I've been to calls with dead bodies before, but they didn't smell like this one. They were fresh, recently killed. They smelled more of alcohol and tobacco than death. This one was old. Rotten, stank of decay. The dead body was sitting in that armchair, you know, watching the TV. The set was off, the electricity had been cut off, but she was still sitting there watching a blank screen. She was in a chair with a little electric fire pulled up close to her feet. She was dressed in a dressing gown and slippers. Her body was so badly decomposed that all that was left of it was bones and hair. I've been in the police force for over 30 years and I've never seen a sight so sad. 
you know, that upset me so much as that did. It really did. A person just sitting there in front of the TV, dead. I couldn't move for a few seconds. I asked the neighbour to wait outside. You know, I closed the door and then I searched the flat. The living room was well, full of rubbish. I mean, it was piled high. It was difficult to move about. The flat was so full of papers, piled high, boxes, letters. Only the narrowest of paths led to, you know, left about to, to move, move between rooms. I searched the flat just in case there was other, any, any other bodies, you know, but oh, the bedroom was empty, as was the kitchen. The bathroom was a wreck. Yeah, the ceiling had collapsed and the, the window was smashed in, but it was empty. We couldn't find any photos of her. Like nothing, not one. There, there must have been something. We, we must have missed something. Yeah. The window in the bathroom had been smashed from the outside. It looked like someone had broken in. I couldn't tell if stuff had been stolen. Well, I couldn't tell for sure with all the mess. I know she had a pet. That I found cat food and a bowl, but the cat disappeared. It must have climbed out of the window when it stopped getting fed. Yeah, I called in the job and waited. I guarded the flat. I guarded her body until CID arrived. All this stuff needs to be cleared today. I cannot start clearing the flat until it's completely empty. Yes, even the curtains must go. Fucking up a lot. I can see the garden from here. It's a bit bare, wintry. None of the trees have any leaves. I bet it's nice in the summer. I got home late last night. We are under very tight time pressure to finish this job. We all had to work a bit longer. We were supposed to finish at six, but we didn't get done until eight. Not that I'll get any more money for doing overtime. <laughs> Just the basic pay, the minimum wage. 12 hours work at eight pounds 72 pence an hour. Less accommodation, less clothing and equipment. Yep, I must pay for this. <laughs> Out of my wages. Yeah, and, and these, they pay for travel, bless them. They sent a minibus to the flat at six to pick us up and they arranged for one to take us home again. We should form a union, stand up for our rights, take strike action. You know, solidarność, solidarność. This material is still okay. You know, it's a bit dusty, but okay. It's soft and velvety. I wonder if it's velvet. It might be. We would recycle it back at home, make clothes out of it, blankets, skirts. I miss home. I miss my mom and sister. My mom is getting old. I try to visit her every year, but it's just so expensive. Last time I went home was uh, 2016. I stayed for a couple of weeks. It's just so hard to go back home and then two weeks later I have to leave them all over again. It's just, you know, it's just so hard. But I'm definitely going to go back next year. It's my mom's 60th uh, birthday and we're planning a big party for her. Yeah. We live in a small village in the countryside just outside Warsaw. It's, it's very peaceful. The only thing you can hear at night are owls hooting. It's about two hours by train from the city, but the trains don't run very often. Yeah, we, we have a simple life. Dad works on a farm repairing machinery. Mom stays at home. We grow vegetables in the garden. You know, it's, it's kind of perfect. Oh, have you ever eaten fresh vegetables picked straight from the ground? They taste different from supermarket vegetables. You know, better. 
You can really taste the soil in them. I miss fresh vegetables. My sister stayed in Poland. She works in a bank in Warsaw. The kitchen chairs are carried across the back of the stage and out the door. Is that it? The kitchen is cleared? The occupant enters from the kitchen and sits at a table. She reads a newspaper and cuts out articles, which she puts into a scrapbook. I'm a self-made man. I was a self-made man. I'm proud of the fact I was a self-made man. I went from nothing to having a nice home, perfect family and a good job through my own hard work and dedication. No one gave me anything. I started from humble beginnings. I'm an only child from working class parents. My childhood was poor, but it was a happy one. Neither of my parents went to university, so I didn't bother. What's the point? University for the likes of us. Dad left school at 16 and went straight into work, and so did I. He was a milkman, my dad. He drove a float along Acton High Street for 30 years. He was a local celebrity. Yet yeah, everyone knew him. That didn't stop the dairy dumping him as soon as the going got tough. It broke his heart. My first job out of school was working with him as his gopher. I liked it, loved it. Gave me a good work ethic. Up at four, to the depot by five, out and around by six, and back to the depot by ten. We delivered milk, orange juice, eggs and bread, five days a week. Every other Friday we collected the money. If there was anything left at the end of the round, he'd let me drink it on the way back to the depot. A gold top was my favourite. <laughs> Do you remember gold top? That rich, creamy taste. If I close my eyes, I can taste it now. <laughs> See, working with my dad set me off on the right course in life. Hard work and loyalty brings rewards. When my dad retired, or rather when he got retired, I had to find my own way. The plan was for me to take over his ram with me when he left, but that didn't happen. But in the late 90s, there weren't much call for milkmen anymore. People got what they wanted from the supermarkets. I don't blame them. It's more convenient, it's easier, it's cheaper. Suddenly I was 18, the only breadwinner in the house and unemployed. See, I knew that I was a, a people person. Delivering milk had taught me that. It's what I loved to do. I loved working with people. It came naturally to me. In a few years down in Shepherd's Bush Market, working on a fruit and veg stall with Bob and Stella, I liked it. Yeah, I was good at it. The money weren't fantastic. My time on the stall ended up the same way as the milk round did, as more and more people got their fruit and veg from the supermarket, the trade on the stall disappeared. We weren't all bad at Shepherd's Bush Market. I met my future wife there. And she was Bob and Stella's daughter. Love at first sight. We married and moved in together a year later. Kids came quickly, Bella and Gracie, and well, my world was complete. I left the market just before Gracie was born as I needed to earn more money to support the family. Found a job in a local estate agent and been there ever since. 12 fantastic years from making the tea, worked my way up to heading up lettings. There's money to be made in property, it's all commission based, so, you know, you gotta work hard, but the rewards are worth it. You get what you deserve in life. That's what I believe. My dad was a police officer. We worked in the same station, Wood Green Police Station, North London. I followed in his footsteps, you could say. A family tradition. My dad was a police officer all his life, from when he left school until he retired 40 years later. And I guess that's what happened to me. Oh well, could be worse. I've never really been that ambitious. I, I, mean, I didn't want to move up the career ladder as others do. I was happy being a beat cop. I just loved the job. I was doing, and I, I loved the job I was doing, and I didn't want to go any further. I had one year in CID back in 2003, but I didn't like it. it wasn't for me. Too hard, too male. 
and I don't like the taste of beer. So I went back to being a regular beep copper. It's quite satisfying when you get to know an area, you see the kids grow up, you, you feel part of the community. Yeah, as if they were your own children. There was a moment many years ago before I joined the police when I, well, when I rebelled, <laughs> when I nearly escaped, but I didn't last long. Now I live at home looking after mum, working four days a week as a police officer and um, working seven days a week as a carer. The occupant turns on the TV. Yeah. I hold my mum's hand at night when we watch TV. It's like so small, but her grip is so light that I'm, I'm not sure she knows I'm holding it. Like tissue paper, like it could tear easily. Sometimes I miss not having my own life, not having children, not having a place of my own, but my mum needs me. What can I do? Family comes first. Why do people treat you differently when you don't have children? I mean, they look down on you. <laughs> they treat you as like a second class citizen. They do. The government, the media. Think of all the tax breaks and maternity leave women with children get. <laughs> Friends and relations used to ask me if I had children. Let's stop now. <laughs> yeah. I remember the look of pity on their faces, even though they tried to conceal it. Could have been different. For a moment, I was on another path. The kitchen is nearly done. Just the uh, appliances left to go. We'll have to get a trolley in to move them and get them down the stairs. There's two flights. It won't be easy. You know, and that piano. That will take a bit of getting out. No, I, I wish I could play the piano. <laughs> oh, my, I have lessons. Hello, hello. My union test. Hey, oh, it's my daughter. Hey, sto lat, sto lat, niech żyje, żyje nam. Hey, we actually want to have test. So I, it's my daughter's birthday today. I'm going to have to talk to her, all right? No, wszystkiego najlepszego, kochanie, skarbie. Strange thing happened the other day, just after I moved into the flat in Archway. Someone died in the flat opposite mine and lain there undiscovered for years. I discovered the body. Imagine that, a dead body there for all that time. Three years, I reckon. It was the smell that I noticed first, this horrible, um, rotten smell coming from somewhere. I couldn't tell where. I thought it was a dead rat or something trapped under the floorboards. I asked the other residents, but if they could smell it, but they couldn't. It's only me. I must have a extra sensitive nose, a, a, a highly developed sense of smell. I tracked the smell down coming from the flat opposite mine called the police. A couple of days later, the police sent a female officer around to investigate. We couldn't find a key, nobody had a spare, so we had to break in. Well, I broke in. Police officer was too small, door was too strong. And been open for years, all the hinges and locks were rusted shut. After a couple of goes, the door frame splintered and I was able to push the door open sufficiently so he could enter the flat. I have never seen such a mess in my entire life. Now I've visited a few dirty flats in my times, you know, seen the mess that some tenants leave behind, but this was something else. The flat was a tip. You had boxes, papers, rubbish everywhere, stacked high, touching the ceiling. And in the middle of the room sat an old armchair. There was a body 
what I don't know what. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. I couldn't tell if it was young or old. All I could tell was that the body was dead. Long dead. It scared the living daylights out of me, to be honest. A dead body in the flat next to mine. Imagine that. What, 10 feet from where I sleep at night. I've had nightmares ever since. The dead person was just sat in front of the TV, just staring at a blank screen. Oh, it's disgusting. The smell, the flies, the mess, just the thought of it sitting there for all that time, it, it sends shivers down my spine now. Well, thankfully, the police took the body away quite quickly. It was a short investigation, a few photographs that needed to be taken, but that was all done by the end of the following day. The body was placed in a black body bag, carried out of the building and taken off to the morgue. They said there'd be an investigation that I'd have to come along to the coroner's court to give evidence and but that would take a few months to organise. Well, it makes me feel sick just thinking of it. The occupant exits to the kitchen. The TV set has taken out the flat. I come here at night, go into a flat when it's quiet, have a nose around. Oh, there was so much rubbish in here. She was a hoarder. Cleaners had done a good job clearing it away. They were here for three days. I've seen them coming and going. I have a good look around at night, see if there's anything I could use in here. Got my eye on that wardrobe. I reckon that will fit my bedroom. I could do with the extra storage. And thank you very much, everyone. We will meet again. We're going to take a quick 10 minute break to use the facilities, grab a drink and refresh ourselves. We'll be back starting again at 15 minutes past eight. See you shortly.
I was a miracle baby. My parents were quite old when they had me. Both in their late forties. I think they'd given up trying. I was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> I was doted on all through my childhood, protected, cosseted. When I was old enough, I left home. I found their love suffocating. I went to university straight after school. York, first one in my family to go. I studied for a BA in music and graduated with a 2-1. As a child, I dreamt of being a musician, of being in a band. Any form of music would do. Pop, classical rock. I wanted to be Marianne Faithful. It is the evening of the day. I sit and watch the children play. Smiling faces I can see, but not for me. I sit and watch as tears go by. Piano slightly out of tune. <laughs> I guess it's not been played for years. <laughs> it's not bad, won't need much tuning. I come here when I can just to play it. I know that's wrong of me, but I feel Vera would approve. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be happy that her piano is being played. I studied the piano at university, along with the guitar and drums. I can make quite a racket if I put my mind to it. If I were prime minister, I'd make a law that every house had a piano in it for free. Every home needs music, don't you think? Does that sound good? Can I rely on your votes? I miss music. Everyone needs music in their life. If I had my own flat, I'd buy a piano, an upright piano. Mm. Yeah, and I'd put it in the living room. I'd play it every night. I think it's important that people have music in their life what they'll do with this piano. I make inquiries. Yeah, they might give it to me. Well, there isn't room. There isn't enough room for a piano at home with mum. She uses the living room as her bedroom. But when I move out, that's what I want to do. Get a piano. I'm going to move out one day before I get too old. Get a little place of my own. Yeah, not too big. Just big enough for me and a piano. Something like this flat. Yeah, about this size. Yes, this flat. This flat would be perfect. I wonder what they're going to do with it. Yeah, I'll make inquiries. See if I can get a discount. Maya's been having such a good time. She loved the dress I got her. She said that she's going to wear it all day long. Jakub has organized a party for her. All her friends from school are coming round to my mom's later. You know, it's a frozen party, like the film, in, in mom and dad's garden. I miss her. I miss them all. I haven't seen them for 12 months. And it just breaks my heart. The office was virtually empty when I walked in. Just a couple of the juniors at the front desk answering the phones, a couple of young girls, eager, ambitious, <laughs> tits and teeth on show. Derek was in his office at the back. He stood up when he saw me enter. He was on the phone, so he signalled us to wait outside for a few moments till he'd finished. When he was done, he beckoned me in. God, this was going to be hard. Humble pie. I've never been good at eating humble pie. How are you? He asked as I sat down. Yeah, not good, I replied. The wife's left me, the kids won't talk to me, and I'm living in a shoebox on the archway road. Home. 
Sorry to hear that. Oh, and there's a dead body in the flat opposite mine. Silence. We sat there looking at each other in silence for a few moments. I'm, um, I'm sorry that I said what I said, I told him. I'm sorry that I lost my temper. I shouldn't have done it. I, I, I should have been more professional. I can't take you back. His statement came out like a bolt out of the blue. Simple, to the point, no messing about. Why not? Someone's already started in your job. Well, I've been replaced. It's only been two weeks. Sorry. Who is it? Uh huh? Is it that girl on the front desk, little Miss Cleavage? Well, she started quickly. Did you have her lined up? Was all this planned? She's my daughter. Your daughter. Your fucking daughter. Why? Is she cheaper than me? No, I'm sorry. You'll find somewhere else. I'll give you a good reference. How am I supposed to live? I'm sorry. It's not personal. Don't take this personally. How else am I supposed to take it, Derek? Huh? I have nothing. I have no one. How am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to live, Derek? How am I supposed to live? He didn't reply. You're an evil bastard, Derek. After all the years of loyalty I've shown you, don't you owe me something? You do. You owe me something. I've had a complaint about you, he said, without a hint of emotion. What? Several, in fact. Who from? Complaints about your behaviour. Your inappropriate behaviour. Even a customer has complained. I was speechless for a moment. Well, it's fictitious. They're all made up, I promise you. They're all made up. Luckily for you, they're not pressing charges, he said. But I won't tolerate it. I can't have you working here, not after that. I was stunned. I left his office without saying another word. I promise you there was nothing in those allegations, nothing at all. Now, don't get the wrong impression of me. I'm not, I'm not like that. Don't believe what my wife says, what King Derek says. It's not true. You believe me, don't you? Huh? Don't you? Straight after university, I went travelling. The usual student thing, you know, backpacking across India. I travelled for a year with a few friends from university, Ashley, and a couple of girls. I loved it. I was happy. I was free. Varanasi is the most amazing place I've ever been in my entire life. It blew me away. Yeah, completely blew me away. I wanted to stay. You know, the colour, the noise. Oh. Have you ever been? You like it there. I guarantee it. It's on the River Ganges. It's just so full of colour and life and people. It's the centre of the Indian silk trade. And the shops are full of colours. Saris, pashminas, just full of all the colours of the rainbow. Some people couldn't take it. It was too much for them. A couple of the people I was travelling with, well... They wouldn't leave the hostel, couldn't leave the hostel. They were completely overwhelmed. But I loved it, except for a few days when I got sick. No, I loved it all. I jumped right in, immersed myself totally in the experience. I wanted to stay forever. Yeah, they have a completely different attitude to death over there. It's not the sad ending like it is here. It's a transition, a passing from one life to the next. There are these large steps which lead down to the river where they hold cremations. They're called guts. They hold cremations on them every day. More than one cremation every day, hundreds every day. The bodies are laid out on a pyre. 
left open so everyone can see them. They hold a short ceremony and then the pyre is set alight. It burns for days. The smell of burning flesh hangs in the air over Varanasi all the day, all the time, day and night. A constant reminder of our mortality. You know, when the fire is burnt out, the ashes are scattered on the river. It's quite remarkable, but a public spectacle. I mean, not like here, where it's behind closed doors, private for, for family and close friends only. I would like to have stayed longer in India, but my mum got sick and I had to come home and uh, help dad look after her. Sorry about that. It can get so upsetting. I'm thinking of going back home. <clears throat> I'm applying for settled status in the UK, but I might go back to Poland. It's just too heavy for me to carry. Oh God, you're just so wasteful in this country. This rock has been here for all that time and is hardly worn. Jakub took Maya back to Poland 12 months ago. He couldn't find work in this country and thought that he could give her a better life back in Poland. When I get settled status, they can come back and join me. Well, that's the plan. I want to set up my own cleaning business. Well, it, might, it might change now after Brexit. I might go back home. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm disappointed with Jakub. He has let me down. We had plans to start our own business in the UK. He trained as a plumber back in Poland and was studying to be an electrician in the UK. He quit too soon, gave up too easily. Now he's gone back and taken our daughter with him. He could have tried harder. He could have given it a few more years, but he was homesick. So am I, yeah, but I haven't quit. I'm just so disappointed in him. The occupant enters from the kitchen with a bowl of soup. She sits at the table and eats the soup. It's Valentine's Day at the weekend. Jakub will call, but I won't go out. I won't get a present, you know, not this year. This has to go. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! What is that? Oh, it's a fool! It's a fool! Top, top. What is that? What is it? Oh, okay. oh no, 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 no! Is it a rat? No, no. It's it's too big for a rat. And it's and it's too small for a dog. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh my god, it's disgusting. Oh. oh my god, oh my god, it's got to be a dead cat. Oh my god, oh my god, oh how horrible, it makes, makes me feel sick. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, fool, fool, oh my god, I'm just, wait, 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 Oh God, oh God, Ugh. oh my God, oh my God, okay, okay, it's just horrid, it's just, it's falling apart, okay. You'll be shocked by the numbers of dead animals we find. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna get it out of here. Oh, oh my God, oh, foo, 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 foo. The end of January came and went and I was at rock bottom. That's where I was, rock bottom. Signed on a dole before. Never been on the housing, uh, never been wanting a housing benefit before. I've always earned my own money. Archway Job Centre Plus is a large grey building on Elthorne Road, just off Holloway Road. Unfriendly, if buildings can be unfriendly. Unwelcoming, foreboding. 
I know it well. I've let a few flats nearby and passed the job centre nearly every week. I called in on my way back from the flat. I sneaked in, collar up, hat down, hoping that no one would see me. Why does the smell of smoke and alcohol hang on everyone in the job centre? Why don't the unemployed wash? I'm sure they could afford soap. They took more care of their personal hygiene, then maybe finding a job will be a lot easier, don't you think? I picked up a booklet, completed a form online, booked an appointment with an advisor for three days' time and left as quickly as I could. I then went back to watch some daytime TV. I've discovered that there's only so much daytime TV a person can take before they go totally out of their mind. My mum had a stroke in May 1987. She was only 60. It was devastating. She needed care 24-7. I came home from India straight away and found part-time work at a local school teaching music. For a career in teaching, you need an extra qualification, a PGCE. It takes two years part-time, which I didn't have. There was a course at my local college, so I applied and got accepted. And suddenly, I was a part-time student, a part-time teacher, and a full-time carer for my mum. After the stroke, mum couldn't swallow solid food. She had to eat pureed food. We got a carer in to cook her lunch, but I cooked her breakfast and dinner and fed it to her with a spoon. I still do. Pureed food tastes yuck, you know, bland. A lot of the enjoyment of eating is in the chewing, don't you think? After a year teaching, a full-time job came up at the local police station. The Met were having a recruitment drive and my dad wanted me to apply. He said he would share mum's care, brought the application form home and helped me fill it in. I got accepted in the summer of 1988 quit my course, quit my job, and started with the Metropolitan Police, full time in the autumn of the, the same year. I still remember the oath. I do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve the Queen in the office of Constable with fairness, integrity, diligence and impartiality, upholding fundamental human rights and according equal respect to all people and that I will, to the best of my power, cause the peace to be kept and preserved and prevent all offences against people and property, and that while I continue to hold the said office, I will, to the best of my skill and knowledge, discharge all the duties thereof faithfully according to the law. Oh, quite a mouthful. But my dad, he was so proud of me. We managed to get mum to the passing out parade Dad pushed her there in a wheelchair. There was a, a special place for her at the front. They both shed a tear. I've now been in the police for 30 years. I could retire next year. My dad died in 2005. We had a little service for him at the local crematorium. A celebration of his life. A couple of, a couple of his old colleagues came, but it was a small affair. Not like Varanasi. No burning fires for 24 hours. No floating ashes on the Thames. I don't know how I'd like to be remembered. M music must be a part of it. Any patrol able to attend the pursuit in Waterloo Park? Over. That's just around the corner. I'll have to go. Uh, Sierra 44, able to attend. Over. We buried the cat in the garden, right at the back by the fence. The ground was so hard, it took us ages to dig a hole. Yeah, I said a few words. Yeah, I guess it was her, it was her pet, the old lady, her companion. I don't know what it was called, so we called her Kichunia <laughs> and gave her a great send-off. I don't know if it was a female cat. I, I hope it was. Well, I hope there isn't anything else under this furniture. 
it made my stomach turn. <laughs> Last week, I was promoted to team leader. I'm now in charge of the cleaning team for the whole job. Both the men and women answer to me. It's quite a responsibility. I don't get any more pay for it, just a minimum wage. But it makes the job more interesting, makes the day pass quicker. It's down to me to get this flat cleared and clean in three days. Yeah, it's quite a task, but we can do it. I have a great team working for me. Yeah, the two guys are from Poland and Christina is from Romania. She speaks very good English. They all work extremely hard. The occupant finishes eating the bowl of soup and takes the empty bowl out to the kitchen. The table and chair she are sat on are taken out of the flat. The flat is now empty of furniture except for the armchair which is in the middle of the room and the piano. Right, good. Yeah, yeah, we can leave that until tomorrow. The piano is being collected on Wednesday night by a team of specialist removers. I don't know how they will get it down the stairs, but that's their problem, not mine. Oh. That's where she died. In that chair. The police found her sitting in the chair watching the TV when they broke. They think she'd been there for three years. Poor thing. No one noticed that she was dead for over three years. Okay, that's it for today. That's me done. Back again tomorrow. I'm going to get a large bottle of Coke Zero on the way home and a slice of Karpatka cake. I'm going to have a little birthday party for Maya. Do you know what it is? Karpatka cake. You know, it's, it's a delicious cake made with Puff pastry and fresh cream. I love the taste of fresh cream, don't you? Oh, there used to be cows on the farm where my dad worked. He brought milk home every night. You know, it was still warm. It was just so creamy. If I close my eyes now, I can, I can still taste it. Mm. There's a Polish shop on the corner of my road. It sells all sorts of lovely things. I don't shop there often, just window shop when I pass by. But tonight, it's a special occasion, so I'm going to treat myself. Hello, yes? It's my bad. The occupant enters from the kitchen with some cat food in the bowl, which she places on the floor. She sits in the armchair and knits. A letter arrived for me a couple of days after going to the job centre. It was an official looking letter. I thought it must have been from the job centre regarding my claim. So I took it up to the flat to open. It wasn't from the job centre. It was from her. My wife. More precisely, from her solicitors. She wants a divorce. She cited unreasonable behavior. She wanted the house, she wanted the kids. She, she wanted everything. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. The words took a moment to sink in. Unreasonable behavior. What does that mean? I couldn't breathe. Okay, I lost my temper, I regret it, but she provoked me. I'm not a violent man, not normally. I've never hurt anyone in my life, but she provoked me. She pushed me too far and I snapped. I'm gonna fight it. I've got to fight it. I'll show her how unreasonable I can be. I'm going to fight no matter what, the, what it costs. She's the one being unreasonable. I stumbled out of the flat, lurched down Althorn Road and went into Archway Job Centre Plus. I got an appointment with Mrs Rogers at midday, I told the man waiting at the entrance, smiling at me. So fucking superior. 
He looked familiar. I think I must have sold him a flat. First floor, he said. Take a seat on the sofa. She'll call you when she's ready. Mrs. Rogers was a friendly looking lady, fat, middle-aged, long brown hair, slightly grain roots tied back in a bun. She smiled as I sat down. Good morning, sir. How are we today? Was she really that interested? Did she really care whether my day had been good or bad? Could my day be good? Hmm? I'd lost my house, lost me job, lost me wife and family. How could I possibly be having a good day? How can anyone in that fucking place be having a good day? We chatted for a bit. I signed a contract. She typed a few things in the computer. I signed, signed again. The computer spat out more paper, sheets of it, a charter, a commitment and an offer to pay me 73 pound and 10p a week in arrears every two weeks if I stuck to my commitment to search for work. 73 pound and 10p a week, is that all? Well, you can claim housing benefit and, 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 and council tax benefit as well. 73 pound and 10p a week to live on. It's what the government sets. How am I supposed to live on 73 pounds and 10p a week? Uh, people do. I have nothing, and no savings, no income, no family to fall back on. What am I supposed to do? Huh? Tell me that, what am I supposed to do? Oh. The pursuit was someone we've been looking for, yeah, for some time. Whew. It was very exciting. Oh, I still get a thrill even after 30 years. <sighs> we got him eventually. He was hiding in some bins. <laughs> there were a lot of officers there. useless if truth be told i mean i've been on better chases chasing after children if he'd gone a little further across the road he could have gotten onto the heath and then we would have struggled to find him do you know the heath yeah it's full of great places to hide anyway we got him and he's now in breath by the end of it i must have run further than i thought Oh, sweaty. Oh. No, Vera, the lady who lived in this flat, so who died in this flat, her funeral was a quiet affair. I went to represent the police, you know, no one was there apart from me, oh, the neighbour and the undertaker. No family, no friends, no work colleagues. It was good seeing the neighbour there. I met him a couple of times during the investigation. He was ups as upset as Vera's death, as was I. We discovered the body together. He saw us sitting there. He said he'd had nightmares ever since. He makes you think about your own mortality, doesn't it? When something like that happens, you know, in the place that you call home. The undertaker said a few kind words and yeah. And then the coffin was taken away. We played a piece of music. I chose it. We'll Meet Again by Vera Lynn. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know where. But I know we'll meet again. Some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do. Till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away. Beautiful, isn't it? I know it's a bit obvious, her name being Vera as well. 
we played it at my dad's funeral and I thought it was appropriate. They have a garden of remembrance around the back of the crematorium. Yeah, a huge rose garden full of beautiful red roses. We scattered her ashes amongst the flowers. It was sad having a funeral and no one who knew her coming. I found it upsetting that she died alone. Imagine that, going through your life, existing for 70 years without leaving a trace. Like leaving nothing behind, not a trace, not memory, nothing. She isn't a memory for anyone. I'd hate that to happen to me. I'll remember her. I'm never going to forget this case. I've become obsessed with it. Do you mind if I take some photos of something to remember her by? Is that bad of me? No one will know. No one, no one will find out. I mean, no one will see them, but me. The occupant exits to the kitchen. Good morning. How are you today? Yeah, good. Uh, I am, I'm good. Okay, so today's task is to clean the flat. Every surface, thoroughly, uh, disinfect it, okay? Maya had a great party yesterday. She made a video and sent it to me. Several, in fact. I watched them when I got home many times. She looked like she was having fun. Jakub made them an area in the garden where they could dance. He hung up colored light and put the CD player outside. Yeah, he was the DJ. <laughs> yeah, it looked fun. I got home late again yesterday. Too late to get a cake. We had to help on another job for a couple of hours. We should get finished earlier today. Okay, we might get finished earlier today. We only have today to finish here. We need to start a new job first thing in the morning. The clock is always ticking. That's a big job tomorrow. An office clean over near Heathrow. The old tenant is moving out and the landlord wants it deep cleaned uh, before the new tenant moves in. They are moving in on Monday. The whole company is working on it. Even the boss is going to be cleaning. 20 people working all weekend. They must be getting paid a fortune. I usually work in a pub at the weekend, but I had to change my rota to fit in. It looks straightforward. I only have to prove who I am and how long I've been here. It should be okay. Nothing is straightforward, is it, in life? No, nothing. Uh, if you are an EU, EA, or Swiss citizen, you and your family can apply to the EU settlement scheme to continue living in the UK after 30th of June of 2021. If your application is successful, uh, you'll get either settled or pre-settled status. Uh, proofs of identity. Ah, you need a valid passport or national identity, uh, identity card. Okay. You also need to provide a digital photo of your face. Got it. Uh, proof of continuous residence. Uh, to be eligible for settled status, you need to have lived in the UK for at least six months in any 12 month period for five years in a row. Uh, and you need to provide proof of this when you apply. The occupant enters from the kitchen and closes the window. She exits to the bedroom. I've been here for six years. It should be a doddle. Okay, nothing is a doddle with the UK government. The company holds classes on how to apply for settled status. Most of the workforce uh, is from Eastern Europe. Some of them have gone back already because of Brexit, like you know, Jakub. 
but the rest are going to apply for settled status. We have a day off to apply. <laughs> we don't get paid for it, but we're given a day off. Mine's next Tuesday, finger crossed. I'm thinking of applying for citizenship after I get settled status. You know, I love this country. When Jakub comes back, we're thinking of getting married and applying for citizenship. I want Maya to be British. And I've been thinking more and more about starting my own cleaning company. I don't have to wait until Jakub comes back. I should start it up straight away. I can take some of the girls from here with me. I could, that could make it way easier. I'm sure they would come. I know Christina would. You know, she's as unhappy as I am. I would make them all partners in the new business, all equal partners. We would share the profits. I don't need to earn that much, just enough to have comfortable life. I'd like to buy a flat one day, nothing too big, a small flat, just with just enough room for the three of us, you know, to start with. Who knows? We might have another baby one day. Looking back on it now, I guess I was to blame. It's not that she was innocent, my wife. Oh no. But the bulk of the blame lies with me. I own up to it. I'm still in the flat in Archway. It's been three months and I'm still here. My 40th birthday came and went, Valentine's Day, Easter. I haven't found a job, but I will do soon. I've got an interview next week at Asda. And I'll move out of here one day when my six months are up. I don't want to waste any more money. I shouldn't have hit her. That's my biggest regret. I hold my hands to me too. I didn't, and, and and I regret it now. I had it all. I had the perfect life: friends, family, nice home, good job. Now it's gone. There's nothing of it remains. It ju just shows how fragile life is, doesn't it? How easy it is to have it all and then lose everything. How quickly it can go wrong. What is life without family and friends? There's nothing left, just an empty shell. And 73 pound and 10p a week paid in arrears. I don't think Vera Williams was her real name. In fact, I'm sure it wasn't. It's on some of the posts that was at the flat, but I couldn't find any record of her on any database. There was nothing at the tax office, no national insurance number, no GP record, nothing. It's as if she hadn't existed. What I did find out is that she bought this flat 12 years ago. Yes, the transaction is recorded with the land registry, or at least someone called Vera Williams paid £170,000 in cash for flat six Waterloo House on the 12th of August 2008. No mortgage, no chain, a simple tra cash transaction. She was about 70 years old when she died. About 70, it's hard to tell. Her body was so badly decomposed, you couldn't make out her age. 70 years old, plus or minus five, the coroner said. She had died of natural causes about three years ago. Again, it was difficult to tell the exact time of death. We could tell that no foul play was involved and there hadn't been a burglary, so the police investigation was closed. Most probably it was a massive stroke in front of the TV. Like my mum, really. Quick, sudden, painless. Right in the middle of EastEnders. What a way to go. The occupant enters from a bedroom dressed in a nighty and dressing gown and sits in the armchair for a few minutes. I wish my mum, no, no, I shouldn't say it. I do sometimes think that if mum had, you know, died of the stroke, 
I mustn't think like that, you know, but would it, would it have been a lot easier for everyone, including her, if she had died straight away. There, I've said it. Don't think badly of me. Who was she? Who was Vera Williams? Was she running away from something, from someone? I didn't know. CID shut the investigation as soon as, as soon as they determined that there was no foul play involved. Too soon in my books. I, I wanted to know more about her. I thought I owed her that at least. You know, I investigated her life as best as I could, but well, I could find out little. There was no one in missing persons that fitted her description, no family waiting, wondering where she was. I would hate to end up like that, moving through this life with no one noticing. She came into this world and left this world without anyone noticing. She played the piano. That's all I could find out. I mean, she might have been good. She might have been concert level pianist. Yeah, and performed in front of thousands at the Royal Albert Hall. She had a, a bank account with Lloyds Bank in Muswell Hill. The account was still open, 50,000 pounds in savings and two direct debits going out each month. Um, council tax on the 1st and National Trust on the 28th. No other money coming in or going out. A little bit of interest every month, but that's all. No one at the bank could remember seeing her. Haringey Council said that her council tax had been paid on time every month. It had never been in arrears. arrears. In fact, there was a repayment due to her for an overpayment. Hmm. Yes, typical. Yeah, made in December 2018. Their mistake, mm -hmm. they said. The direct debit was taken twice, but the overpayment has never been re reclaimed. Other than that, there is no record of Miss Vera Williams with the council. No record of her with social services either. She's not on the electoral register. She's just a ghost. The local shopkeeper remembers someone coming in every Monday morning a few years back, which could have been her. He couldn't give me a good description and I couldn't help him. It's difficult to tell what she looked like as there were no photos in the flat and nothing to show him. We don't have a description of her, just female, late 60s, mid 70s, medium height, well, that's it. That's her, female, late 60s, mid 70s, medium height. He remembers someone fitting the description coming in for a few bits and pieces, but he didn't get to know her. And she stopped coming a few years ago. He thought she'd moved away. There were no photographs in the flat, no family snaps, no holiday pictures. No record of her, no record of her life. We searched the flat looking for clues, anything to tell us something about her. We found nothing. Did we miss something? That would be easy to do with all the mess. Oh, she was keeping a scrapbook. She cut out stories about New Zealand from like every newspaper and stuck them into a book. Yeah. History, fishing, sites, everything. I mean, she, she appeared to be obsessed with New Zealand. I think I'll go to New Zealand next year, do some digging. Yeah, see if I can find out anything. She could have been a bright light once. She could have burned brightly. We'll never know. Her light has long since burnt out. Yep, <coughs> we are using a strong disinfectant. Uh, yeah, kills bacteria, germs, fungi, removes dirt, uh, suitable for all surfaces, and key, keep out of reach of children. Yeah, powerful stuff. Jakub got caught for shoplifting a couple of years ago. You know, nothing too serious. Some clothes and shoes for Maya. I don't know why he did it. I was just so cross with him. We have enough money, not a great amount, but enough to buy clothes and shoes for Maya. 
he got charged, he got a fine. And I'm only telling you this as it worries me that we won't let him stay in the UK. It says here, if you have criminal convictions, if you are 18 or over, the Home Office will check you have not committed serious or repeated crimes and you do not pose a security threat. You'll be asked to declare convictions that appear in your criminal rec record in the UK or overseas. No. It's up to them to decide what's serious. That's what worries me. Any excuse to kick us out? This disinfectant has a nice pine fragrance, don't you think? It's strong enough to take the smell away. That's what hits you first when you enter this flat, the smell. The disinfectant will cover it, make the, the flat smell fresh like a forest. Oh, that is cold. It's the smell which he noticed first, the neighbor, the guy who lives across the hall. I've met him a couple of times. He's the one who called the police. You know, imagine that. Someone dying in the flat next to yours and you not knowing about it for years? A dead body lying just across the hallway from you, where you live? Where you sleep for all the time? I couldn't live here any longer if I knew that. You know, imagine that. Oh, imagine that. Makes me shiver. The occupant exits to the bedroom. The armchair's taken out of the room, so the room's now completely empty. I knew the neighbor from before. I pretended that I didn't, but we'd, we'd met with me. We, <laughs> we'd met before. I remember him well. We used to clean the flats he manages, give them a deep clean at the end of tenancy. Yeah, I, I remember his jobs very well. We had three hours to clean the flats and they were always in such a mess. Three hours and no longer. He wouldn't pay us anymore. I remember him well. I found him Creepy. He always managed to be alone with me in the flat, trap me in there, just me and him. I didn't like it. I was scared. I complained to my boss about him, but my boss didn't do anything. He said he didn't want to lose the customer. I got moved off that job. I was relieved when that, when that happened. I wonder if they tell prospective owners that someone died in this room. I bet they don't. I wouldn't want to live in a flat where someone had died, where someone had lain undiscovered for three years. I don't believe in ghosts, in spirits, but I still believe that something of a person must remain after they've died. A part of us must stay behind. It doesn't matter how thoroughly I clean the flat, some, something will remain. A part of her will remain. Hmm, not sure I could live with that. That would be ah, too much to live with. Hmm. I wonder who she was. The lady who lived here, Vera Williams. I wonder if she was alone like me. She could have been Polish and changed her name to fit in. We'll never know. She could have come to this country as a refugee during the Second World War, come with her parents as an evacuee. Who knows? We'll never know. What if Jakub doesn't return to the UK or Maya? What if they stay in Poland? What will I do? I'll be totally alone. You know, sometimes I regret leaving home and coming here. 
Yeah, I feel lonely at times, very alone. But life is better here. There's more of a future in this country. I can earn more money. Yeah, but it's, it's difficult being away from the ones I love. I'm going to start a business. I've made up my mind. I'll talk to the other girls tonight, see what they think. We could take some of the customers with us, you know, the best ones. I know what they charge them and I'm sure we could charge less. Then I can start looking at flats. I wonder if they will sell this one. You know, it would be perfect. Just enough room. I might get a discount. I'll, I'll ask around. They might find it hard to sell. You never know because of, you know, what happened. They might be happy to accept a lower offer. I'll, I'll check it out. Oh, okay. I must crack on or I'll never finish in time. The dead body in the flat opposite mine was a woman. I found that out at the coroner's court. Her name was Vera Williams and she was 70 years old when she died. I went to the court to explain how I'd found her. It was all a bit traumatic. Vera had died alone, the coroner said. She had no friends, no relations to miss her. The police couldn't find anything else about her. No records, no loved ones, nothing. She died of natural causes about three years ago. She'd sat in her flat undiscovered for all that time. How sad is that? Dying on your own and no one missing you. I'll come and visit the flat as often as I can at night when no one's around. The lock still hasn't been changed. Completely empty now it's been clean. It's like nothing ever happened here. Knowing that she died in here upset me so much I feel I must come here to... I, well, I don't know, apologise to check that she's okay, that she's, that she's at peace. That yeah, sounds weird, doesn't it? I went to her funeral. I, did, I didn't know her, but, you know, we were neighbours, so sort of. Who knows? I might have even sold her this flat. None of Vera's family or friends were there, just me, the undertaker and the policewoman who was with me when we discovered the body, no one else. They played We'll Meet Again and we sang Lord of the Dance. I don't know who chose them, but they felt appropriate. It was good to see the policewoman there. I recognised her from before. She was the one who came to our house on Boxing Day. I don't think she recognised me. I wonder who she was, Vera. Did she once have everything, only to lose it all? She could have built up this perfect life, just like me, only to suffer one tragic event and lose it all. We'll never know. But life goes on. The council will repair and redecorate her flats. Soon it'll be like she never existed. Now, I wonder how much I want for it. It's a nice flat, it's decent size. The room's large and bright and, and airy. One large double bedroom. A bit of work's needed in the bathroom, but that green shoots, flowers, grass could do with a bit of a cut. I think I could get it at a discount. I'm sure I could, what with my connections and all. Yeah, I'll make inquiries. Could be a good opportunity for us all to get back on our feet. Vera's flat is empty now. The contractors have finished. I recognise the cleaner from before. I didn't say anything. I arrested her partner for shoplifting last year. She was so upset with him. I hope they're still together. Vera's flat and all her savings will go to the Crown as we couldn't find a will. The funeral director will take some pay for the funeral, but not much, and the rest will go to the Crown. Then nothing
the remains. But how much is 150? It's in a very desirable area. <laughs> a bit vulgar talking about money at a time like this, isn't it? But geez, that's a lot of money. Why does the crown get it all? I could buy it. I might even get a discount. Look, if I buy it before it gets listed by an estate agent, oh, I'll save on fees. Yeah, I'll use my pension. I'll investigate. I'd have to put my mate at home. I mean, she wouldn't like it, but it would be for the best. I might even meet someone and they could move in with me. I'm, so, I'm sick of being thought of as half a person. Society is all about couples. A person on her own is still a person, don't you think? A woman without children is still a woman. I want people to see the person behind the uniform. See the, the living, breathing woman behind the uniform. I dated someone for a long time many years ago. The love of my life. It got serious. We were going to live together in India. We wanted to live there for a few years before coming back to the UK. Ash, his name was Ashley. I met him at university. He was a musician. He still is a musician. I see him in the papers. I loved him very much. We, me and Ashley, this is hard for me to speak about, sorry. I've never told anyone about this before. I got pregnant in India, me and Ash. We were gonna have a baby. We were gonna call her India if it was a girl. I lost India after three months. I had a miscarriage after three months. It was devastating. Did you know that after three months, a fetus is about three inches long? It's got little arms and legs, a face. A nose. We had a funeral for our baby in Varanasi, just the two of us on the bank of the Ganges. It was a celebration. That was just before I came back home. It was the last time I saw Ashley, the last time I was with someone. I don't want to end up like Vera, dead in a room for three years with no one caring. No one to mourn me, no one missing me. That's not me. That's, that's not going to happen. My story doesn't have to end like that. All the characters having left, the stage is completely bare. Light outside fades. Light begins to pour in through the window once more. We're in the flat 12 years earlier. The flat is still completely empty. The door opens. Here it is, number six, please come in. Come in. Two flights of stairs leaves me a little short of breath. <laughs> Not too much, is it? I'll get used to it. Yeah, get you fit. <laughs> oh, this is the main room. It's quite large and bright, as you can see. It smells a little musty. It's been empty for a few weeks. A good clean will sort it out. I'll get it clean for you before you move in. Oh, if you move in. The window overlooks the garden. Mm. Um, shared garden? Uh, yes. Yeah. The grass could do with a cup. Yeah, I'll get it clean for you in the grass cup before you move in. Yeah. A coat of paint would really bring it to life. A couple of rugs, perfect. Very homely, don't you think? Where are you living now? I live in Ealing, West London. Do you know it? I've lived in London all my life. 
if you're tired of London, you're tired of life, as my old dad would say. Oh, this is a great area, Archway. You'll like it here. You'll be happy here. I'd like to live here myself one day. Uh, the Tube is just over there, Northern Line, 10 minutes and you're in central London. Not bad. Regular buses to uh, Highgate, Holloway. It's well connected. I've not always been in property sales. I had a milk ran when I was a boy. Do you remember milk floats? Of course you do. I had a milk ran with my old with my dad before I got into selling property. Do you have a job? Sorry, I talk too much. Occupational hazard, I'm afraid. Is the kitchen through here? Yes. Your gas? Yeah, is that okay? It's got a lot of potential, don't you think? It's bright and airy. The cupboard could do with a bit of a clean. You could fit a table, a couple of chairs in the corner. Are you thinking of putting a new kitchen in? Oh. Do you have any pets? No. Why'd you ask? The last owner had a cat. I think that's what you can smell. I'll get it clean thoroughly for oh. you. Uh, the bathroom is through here. There's a bit of work to be done. Yeah. I'd like a bath. Oh, well, there's plenty of room. It had a bath um, before the last owner replaced it with a shower. There's an immersion heater in that cupboard in the kitchen. Uh, electric. There's, lot, there's room for a corner bath. Yeah. That's what I'd put in. A corner bath. Yeah, lovely. Is this a bedroom? Yes. Uh, a double room with plenty of space for storage. Nice size room, don't you think? It's bright and airy. The window looks out onto the road, but it's incredibly quiet. Double glazed. Do you have children? I have one. A girl, Bella. She's two. I've oh, got a picture of her. She looks like her mum. Oh, she's a spitting image of her mum. I've got another one on the way due in a couple of weeks' time. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. I hope it's a boy. One boy and one girl, that'd be perfect, don't you think? We're going to move soon. We've got to move, looking for somewhere bigger. Huh. More space. What do you think? Yeah, it's okay. That's good. Well, the owner's already moved out. She's gone back to live with her mum and dad, so there's no chain. Um, do you have children? I don't know what I'd do if I didn't see my daughter every day. They're expensive, but they make it all worthwhile. Don't you think? It would make living worthwhile. Oh, hang on. Ah, that's the next couple. They want to bring their viewing forward. What are the neighbours like? Uh, I've only met the couple across the hallway. They're lovely. Pete and Shell. He's a teacher and she works in admin for the council. Really quiet. I rented them their flat. It's a great community. They've got a real community spirit going, just like the old days. You'll love it, I promise you. So what do you think? It's a bit more expensive than I was hoping for. But it's only been on the market for a week and we've already had a lot of interest. There's high demand for flats like this, in, you know, in this part of London. I've got a couple viewing it this afternoon, that was them. Look, they're very keen. Do you want to put in an offer? Oh, I've got another flat to see this afternoon. Oh, where's that? Wood Green. Yeah, Wood Green's nice, but it's not as nice as Archway. Don't miss out on this one, it's a good investment. The archways are sought after area. The market's really starting to pick up. Don't delay getting on. On? The property ladder. Oh. Do you want to put in an offer? I'm not sure. Um, let me think about it. Well, um, I've another view in, in half an hour. They were very keen. I think they're going to make an offer. Can you hold it for me? Yeah, only if you put in an offer. 
You're very persistent. Well, it's only because I like it. I think you'll be happy here. I don't want you to miss out. Can you give me a moment? Of course I can. I'll wait outside. Yeah. Just imagine what your life will be like living in this flat. There's so much for you to do, so much to see. The great neighbours, friendly, kind. You won't be lonely here. No, not one day. Picture yourself living here, go on. Picture yourself as part of this happy community. Take all the time you need. Huh? It's good, isn't it? It's a good picture, isn't it? You can come in again. I've made up my mind. Oh? I will make an offer. Great. That is great. Mortgage or cash? Cash. Even better. 175... No, no. 100 and £70,000. Great. I'll see what I can do. I think you'll be very happy here.